God has allowed me to be a wife and a mother and a grandmother. A, a pastor's wife and a servant in the church. I count my family and church as God's greatest earthly blessings to me. And I have come to learn that while homosexuality is part of my biography, it is not part of my nature. But the world that we live in, our anti-Christian age, disagrees. It believes once gay, always gay, along with a host of other lies. If I had a dollar for how many times some gay Christian told me that my problem is internalized homophobia, I'd be a really wealthy woman. Indeed, five lies of our anti-Christian age have coiled their way from the world to the church. And I have nothing to stand on. I used to believe all of these lies as once. And what are the five lies? Well, we just covered one of them. Homosexuality is normal. The second lie is that pagan spirituality is kind and inclusive. The third lie is that feminism is good for the church and the world. That should get a little something out of you guys. I'll take it. The fourth lie is that transgenderism is normal. And the fifth lie is that modesty for women is outdated and dangerous. These lies which have entered the church and the Christian college have one thing in common. They discourage repentance of sin and they encourage the pride of victimhood. And these lies have a subtle appearance because Satan is a liar who specializes in the persuasive lie of the half truth. Let me give you some examples. Have you ever heard that same-sex attraction is a sinless temptation and only a sin if you act on it? Or that people who experience same-sex attraction are actually gay Christians called to lifelong celibacy? Or that people who experience same-sex attraction rarely, if ever, change and therefore should never pursue heterosexual marriage? Or that sex and gender are different and that God doesn't care about whether men live as men and women live as women, because all you need to do is grow in the fruit of the Spirit, as though the fruit of the Holy Spirit can grow from sin. I have heard all of these lies, and just in the last year, from Christian ministries. And this is where I name names, and I'm an English professor, so I call this citing my sources. Revoice, Preston Sprinkles Exiles in Babylon conference sponsored by his heretical Center for Faith, Sexuality, and Gender, and crew. I got three seats, people. And I have believed these lies too, and not only as a Christian, and I have repented publicly as a Christian in my book to you in articles, and these people can do the same. We don't throw people away, but without repentance, we don't trust them. We trust repentant saints, not just people with flashy ministries. <laughs> Biblical doctrine matters, and it sets the course for your life. Christian compassion for the sinners like the sinner I used to be means walking with them through the gritty battle of hating and fighting sin through the power of Christ and living for righteousness through his Holy Spirit. Christian compassion does not coddle, humanize, or domesticate sin. Christian compassion does not believe that man is more merciful than God. Christians do not encourage sinners to come out as gay or trans in order to be quote unquote missional. This is a mission that leads everybody to hell. And if you are a Christian 
whose indwelling sin is marked by sexual or gender confusion. I really do get it. I've made that case. But be warned, there is a particular way that empathy with people who sin in the same way that you do works against your sanctification and their salvation. The biblical truth is that homosexuality and transgenderism are found in the flesh, forbidden in the law, and overcome in the Savior. Do we measure up? No, he measures up for us. The fact that flesh loves sin doesn't make sin lovable. As a believer, you cannot have a secret love of sin and an authentic love of Christ. I stole that line from my husband. He said it last week in his sermon. <laughs> the Puritan Thomas Watson says, Christ is never loved till sin be loathed. And the fact that you did not choose the sin of your flesh does not make it somebody else's responsibility. Sin doesn't make you a victim. You make yourself a victim by not driving a fresh nail into your choice sin every day or a thousand times a day and fighting your sin until it's dead. God established a natural order in the creation of male and female that is good. And you will be the man or woman that God made you to be here on earth and in heaven and in the new Jerusalem or hell with its eternal fire. God's pattern of male and female finds its earthly purpose in biblical marriage. And a world that denigrates biblical marriage or delays it unnecessarily or grows in its homosexuality and transgenderism is a world cursed, not blessed. And what about the people who will be single, either because of widowhood or providence? Singles are needed and beloved in the family of God. So, what about you, dear Liberty students? Are you crushing sin in Christ or coddling it through some of the trash theology that I mentioned before that masquerades as Christian? May God give you strong faith, faith, selfless courage, and wise discernment as you answer the most important question, and I want you to answer it today. I want you to answer it right now. Choose this day whom you will serve. The lies of our anti-Christian age, the idol of LGBTQ+, or the God who made you male and female, image bearers all, divinely patterned for the purpose of building strong Christian marriages, families, churches, and communities, and calling those outside of Christ to repent of sin and come in where even in suffering, it is safe and good and purposeful. So it's my question to you. Choose this day whom you will serve. Thank you.